Celebrate Jesus. Amen, amen. You can give a high five to two people and take your seat in the name of Jesus Christ. It's so good to see you in this place today in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Buana Yesu Asifiwe. Buana Yesu Asifiwe. Are you well? It is so good to see all of you in the house of God today. You look beautiful from where I'm standing. In case you have visitors, Karibuni Sana Shiloh, the heat is just to tell you welcome to this place. Um, yes. It's so good one more time to see all of you in this place. My name is Brian Moshigadi. In case we have visitors, I'm born again. Jesus Christ is the solid rock of my salvation. It is the honor of my life to serve God here at DCIKZ and the Bishop Dr. Jimmy and Pastor Alice Kimani in this campus, the Shiloh Worship Center, the place of breakthrough. It is so good to be with you again. This has been the Harvest Conference 2023, and today we are calling day four of the Harvest Conference. It's our ultimate, it's our last day. We're going to be finishing in the afternoon with the worship experience from two to four, and all of you are invited. As soon as we are done with service, you can go grab something and then come back. We're going to be in this place from two to 4.30. This is for the young, the young at heart, the young in theory, all those other people, that all those categories of people. This is for you, so please come that we may close our eighth annual Harvest Conference together. For those of you who've been able to join, we want to say Asante Sana for coming physically. Those of you who are able to join on live, on Facebook, on YouTube, Asante Sana, we had a wonderful time. Those of you who released your children to come and be with us, we say thank you so much. May the God of grace remember you. And may every seed that was planted ripple into a glorious eternity in the name of Jesus Christ. None shall be lost in Jesus' name. He said none shall be lost in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So let's continue to do that today as we come to this place to finish together. Today is our, what we call the Youth Sunday, is what we call the Harvest Sunday. So we have young people ministering in all our services. Um, even down at the main campus, we have some who we sent as arrows. And so even in the main campus, both of our services, young people are ministering and we bless the Lord for that as well. We have been looking at throughout the week the restart. This has been the restart edition and today I just want to take us back to the restart. We're reading from the book of Deuteronomy. I'm starting from Deuteronomy chapter 10. Deuteronomy chapter 10, I'm going to read a couple of verses. There are quite a bit and I'm going to try and read as far as I can get the restart. Deuteronomy chapter 10, I'm reading the New King James. It says, at that time, the Lord said to me, this is Moses speaking, hew for yourself two tablets of stone like the first and come up to me to the mountain and make yourself an ark of wood. And I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets, which you broke, and you shall put them in the ark. So I made an ark of acacia wood, hewed two tablets of stone like the first and went up to the mountain, having the two tablets in my hand. And he wrote on the tablets according to the first writing the Ten Commandments, which the Lord had spoken to you in the mountain from the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And the Lord gave them to me. Verse 5 says, Then I turned and came down from the mountain and put the tablets in the ark which I had made. And there they are, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now, this parenthesis in verse 6, the children of Israel journeyed from the wells of ben Jakan to... Um, Mozera, where Aaron had died and where he was buried, and Eliezer, his son, ministered as priest in his stead. From there they journeyed on to Gadgoda, and from Gadgoda to Jodbatha, and a land that was um, full of rivers of water. At that time the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant, to minister to him, and bless in his name to this day. Therefore, Levi has no portion of inheritance in his brethren or with his brethren. The Lord is his inheritance, just as the Lord your God promised him. Verse 10, it says, At that time I stayed in the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The Lord also had me at that time, and the Lord chose not to destroy you. Verse 11 and final, Then the Lord said to me, Arise, begin your journey before the people, and that they may go and possess the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. I read that one more time, verse 11. Then the Lord said to me, Arise, begin your journey before the people, that they may go in and possess the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. And that is the word of the Lord. So we're looking at the book of Deuteronomy, and just like we like to do, just a little bit of background. The book of Deuteronomy is um, what we call a sermon of Moses, or a series of sermons of Moses. So Moses, having known that he's not going to cross into the promised land, the Lord has already spoken to him. So Moses anajua haendi kule ameambiwa anaenda. 
kule walikuwa wanaenda all right he's the one who has taken people from the land of egypt into the land of promise but at some pl- at some place called meriba there he was supposed to do something the lord gave him an instruction and instead of doing what he was supposed to do following god he decided to go an extra mile and strike the rock so that water may come out as a result of that the lord calls him aside and says to him no you're not going to get into the promised land just because you didn't trust me and do the thing that I called you to do. So what am I going to do? I am going to appoint somebody, raise up somebody else that will go into the promised land with my people. Now Moses, as a good leader, sits down and prepares the people of God. God himself, actually, because Moses was the man anointed by God to take Israel out of captivity and into the land of promise. We have said it here before that the land of Egypt served as a womb for the nation of Israel. If you think back to how the nation of Israel came to be, the Lord sat and decided that he's going to create for himself his own people. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Right from the very beginning, after the fall of man in Genesis chapter 3, the Lord begins to curate carefully the journey of salvation, the journey of redemption rather. The Lord begins to carve out and to prepare and to raise up people, men and women along the journey so that none will be lost. He's beginning the journey of reconciliation. If you look for the first time we see the good news, the gospel, which is what we call the good news, if you look for the first time that the gospel appears, it is after the man has fallen in Genesis chapter 3. And around verse 15, the, when God is passing the punishment to the, to the serpent, he has passed the punishment. There's the woman, man has been given his punishment, Adam, Eve, Pia, Mambio, Kulayako punishment, and then now the serpent is given the punishment. Okay, So when the serpent is being given his punishment, the Bible says God himself is saying to the serpent, I will cause there to be an enmity between you, your seed, and and her seed. And your seed is going to crush his head and is going your, no, the seed of the woman is going to crush your head, the serpent, and your seed is going to strike his heel. Now, right there is what we call the good news. Because good news is what comes having followed. There was bad news. So now something great has happened. Because in the creation, God was creating and he's saying, and he looked at everything and he said, it is good. He looked at another thing and said, it is good. Looked at another one and said, it is good. And then a couple of stories down the line, man and woman, they fall. The serpent comes and lies to them in Genesis chapter 3, what we call generally again, the fall of man. So the man has fallen and the woman, the man, the human being has fallen, okay? And then God himself in his journey of redemption comes to pick them up, creates clothes for them, covers their nakedness, puts a bit more of a permanent solution where they had created just leaves for themselves, leaves that would have withered where they, will, they created a, a solution for themselves without thinking about what, will, what is going to happen again tomorrow. God comes and puts down an animal, gives them skin that was going to be a bit more long-lasting, covers their nakedness with it, and then releases them now to go out. Even that in itself is God's own journey of reconciliation. He's already begun to bring the man in back into himself because the Lord would have chased them out of the garden without even addressing them. But the Bible says then Adam heard the voice of God in the cool of day and they hid themselves. And God is asking them, why are you hiding? I want you to think, why was it important for God to come close to where they were? This was the fallen man. They had not been seen in the earth before. But now, God, even though sin has entered into the scene, God himself is coming close to where they are. That is the amazing grace of God at work. He will have thundered from heaven, or he will just have wished them away and declared them dead. And the moment he would have thought it, the people would no longer be existent. But God in his grace and his mercy comes down to the fallen man. He who knew no sin comes among them for the very first time. He comes around just to bring the good news himself. God would have given that assignment from heaven. He would have said there's going to be a son, a seed of the woman, and the seed is going to crush your head. God would have delivered that news from there. But we see a glorious, gracious God who comes down in the cool of day and comes to speak to them and tell them himself that there is going to be one who is going to overcome. I know right now there is evil. It is now dark. You people have fallen. But the good news is there is going to be a seed that is going to come, a seed that will crush the head of the serpent. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. That's the first time we see the good news. So throughout, God has been working. God decides, decides in his entire plan of reconciliation and redemption of the fallen man, God curates that he's going to bring Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus Christ was not just going to appear out of nowhere. There needed to be a sequence of events that happened. If you follow right all the way to the beginning in the genealogy of, D of Jesus or the lineage where it gives us right there, we are able to trace it back to those men of old, the, what we call the nation of Israel. So God himself has taken time to make sure that there is a sequence of things. But before Jesus Christ can come, there has to be a place where he's going to come from. So he creates for himself a nation called what? Called Israel. I don't want you to be lost. I know I'm battling with the heat right now. Bwana sifiwe sana. Jinani yako akilala uko na uruhusa ya kumguza guza hivi kidogo. Usichome picha unamguza tu kidogo hivi watu wasijue. Watu wa kamera wakimwangalia hivi anakaa nini. So yes. So God has created for himself a nation. How does he create it? He allows he appears to Moses in Genesis chapter 15 going on forward. He appears to Moses and he's saying to Moses, "I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward and your abundant compensation." He says to him that I want you to know positively that I'm going to give you a, 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 I'm going to give you descendants. But I want you to know positively, your descendants are going to be taken into capti captivity. But after 400 years, they are going to come out. And they shall come out, the Bible says, with great substance. Now, even though Abraham had been given that promise, he's being told it doesn't look like a very good promise, but that what looks like not a very good promise, they're going to go into captivity. It is just to show us that God had a plan. They were not just taken and thrown into captivity into a nation. God had a plan. The only way for Israel to grow as a nation was that they are taken into a place where they were not allowed to intermarry with other people. If they had been left in Canaan or if they had been left outside there, they would have intermarried with other tribes. There wouldn't be the nation that we know as Israel that God used. So God decides to use Egypt, the place of captivity, as the womb for the people. So there is the young man called Joseph, and Joseph is taken and he's thrown or sold there a slave. Um, he goes into Potiphar's house. Potiphar's wife is a misbehaving bad woman, and she's there just trying to um, take her the man of God, and she, this is the sequence of events you can find in the book of Genesis. Um, but because the spirit of God is within Joseph, Joseph says, how can I do such a bad thing against my God. So what does Joseph do? He says he refuses. Now, when he's running away, Potiphar's wife, anaona, unanikata mimi, mimi sikatali angui, utajua. So, analeta shida, anapiga nduru, watu wanakuja, wanawana, uyu kakijana, tulikuwa tunakangalia, tunasema, haka ni kabaya. Tulijua, haka, hivo kanaka, ni kabaya. So, what, was ha what happened? He was thrown into prison. While he was in prison, he went, and the story goes on and goes on and goes on. A lot of us have heard the story. If you haven't, again, I refer you back to the book of Genesis. You can find it right there. Um, I'm just trying to give a quick recap of where we are by the time we're reading what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 10. Now, when he's in prison, uh, the king has a need for him because of the dreams that he used to dream. When, before he was sold, actually one of the reasons why he was not liked by the brothers was because of the dreams he used to have. The brothers didn't like the kinds of dreams that he had, but those dreams were true. God had a plan for those dreams. So anyway, he's called from prison to come and interpret the dreams. The king is so happy about the way he's interpreted the dreams. Very shortly, he's elevated into a place or into a position of greatness. Now he becomes prime minister of the land. Where he came in as a prisoner, now he is prime minister of the land. As a result of that, there is famine in the land out there in Canaan. There is famine, and so his brothers hear that there is food in Egypt as a result of their brother Joseph, who they didn't know was their brother. So Ndugiao wanakuja, and there is a lot of sarakasi na drama ambayo inaendelea hapo, until now Moses, Joseph reveals himself to them. Now he invites the whole family to come and dwell with them in Egypt, the place of abundance. Now, Joseph dies in Egypt, okay? But by, by the time he's dying, he's saying to them, listen, God is going to come and visit us in this place. Okay, when you guys go back, do not leave my bones in this place. So he dies, and the people continue to just be there and to thrive and to excel. Then there arises a Pharaoh that does not know Joseph and does not know the acts of God and the things that God used to do. He does not know about this. And he starts to get threatened by the nation 
that by these people that are growing. These are foreigners that are dwelling among them. So he says, to stop their progress, we are going to place a harsh hand over them. We are going to make them slaves. And so that's how they come into slavery. But while they're in that place, they still continue to grow and to multiply and to grow and to increase and to multiply. So that's how God uses the nation of Egypt for a period of about 400 years as a womb so that this um, nation he's creating for himself called Israel can grow. And then God raises up Moses, the man that we've just read about. God raises him up, and now this is about 430 years later. Now the man Moses is raised up, and he's given the instruction. God calls him by way of the burning bush. God calls him and sends him to go and say to Pharaoh, just one thing, let my people go. And he goes and he, de de he delivers that, that message. And there is a lot of back and forth and back and forth. But finally, Pharaoh releases the people of God. Now they cross on over the Red Sea. And then they start the journey in the wilderness. Now these people called Israel, this nation called Israel, when they come into the wilderness, what was supposed to be a short, brief journey, when they come into, into the wilderness, there's a lot of um, forgetfulness. They forget where they're coming from. They forget who they are. They forget they are a people on assignment. They forget they are not just an ordinary people. They forget God has called them for a reason. They forget that they are not like the Canaanites where they are, despite the many, many things that they had seen God do before they were broken out of prison, which was called Egypt. They forget. So what does God do? God decides he's going to take them around that wilderness what was supposed to be a short journey turns out to be 40 years. They go around and the idea is that all the adult generation would be broken down until a new generation that really trusts God, respects and obeys him and follows him will come up. And that is the nation that God is going to now take. Same Israel, but different generation. That is the same generation that God is going to now take into the promised land. Now, these are the people that we are looking at. Moses is among them. So God is standing at the place and he's looking out and he says to Moses, you can see that land. Because I am kind, you will see the land. That's where the land is. But you're not going to go through. So Moses hearing that knows that he needs to also prepare these people because the first generation did not make it. The second generation must make it. But it is possible for even the second generation to miss it if they do not follow the statutes, the commands, the ways and the charge of the Lord. So Moses sits down to speak to the people of Israel. That is where we are right now. So it is the book of Deuteronomy. That's, that's how it comes to be. Moses is speaking to them in preparation. He's speaking to them in preparation. He's speaking to them as a charge. He's letting them know the first law that I gave them when they're in the wilderness, by the way, just to take us a little bit back, the first law that he gives them when they're in the wilderness, they misbehave a lot. We don't have time. Time fails us to talk about how they misbehaved. They were rebellious. They were stiff-necked. They were hard-hearted people. They, many times, they made Moses one time look at God and say, these are not even my people. They are not my children. These are your own. I don't want them. You take them. If you're not going to go, me, I don't want them. imagine kiongozi. These were a difficult, rebellious people. They were hard-hearted people. How ambiliki, how semezeki. They were impatient people. This one time Moses is going up the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments. This is like the constitution that the Lord he has created a new nation for himself. So he's giving them a set of laws, the constitution, so to speak. So he's called Moses. Beautiful location. Moses goes up to the mountain, camps out there. The Lord is the one that is doing those instructions himself. He's giving the commandments to Moses. And he puts them on tablets, okay? And so Moses is coming down the mountain. Now, while Moses is up there, these impatient, impatient, difficult people are down the mountain, and they are bored. The only, the only explanation we have of their bad habits is that they are bored. There's no fun. Satra do. Moses ako, yalipanda, ajarudi bado. Majua hakuna masimu watitneza mpigia. Tumambie, bu video call us, show us what you're doing up there. You can't. So they decide, we're going to create for ourselves. Yani, we are so hungry to worship God. That's what they were saying. We're so hungry to worship God, we must create ourselves for ourselves a God. And so they, they, they create a, a golden calf. Unajua ini maime jenyo wamekua tuwa kiona. Uko hakuwa na kitu. Hakuwa na ayao, mangombe, lakini wanatembea huko wame interact, wanaona kuna mangombe huku mahali, nasema tutengeneze ngombe. A, 
uh, they make a sculpture of gold. They set it up. They begin to worship. And there's great feast and celebration. Now, when Moses is coming down the mountain, he couldn't have picked a worse day to come down the mountain. As he's coming down the mountain, he's coming down and he finds the people celebrating and in joy and praise to this golden calf, which they have now christened their own God. So Moses, out of anger and disappointment, he throws the tablets down and breaks all the Ten Commandments. And it is a thing of anger. Actually, as I was reading it, it was very interesting because I found that Moses, again, who describes himself as the meekest man to ever live, as the most humble man, in his anger when he came down, he took all those ornaments and says, Ichemshwe, yo the habu, Ichemshwe. Ikachemshwe, ikachemshwe, ikakuwe kasupu ka gold. Aka kunyuisha watu. Can you imagine that man? I mean, nama kwa mtu wa ina gani uyu? There was no one who was more humble or more meek than Moses. This humility is looking like a different thing. Anyway, Moses is an interesting character. So he comes down and he finds the people there. So that's the first law. That's what I'm trying to explain, the first law that was given. So by the time Moses is giving to them Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy actually literally means second law. Okay? So he's giving them the second law because the first one, they broke it. Moses broke it physically, but these people already had, by doing the things that they did, causing Moses to break it, what they did was they also took the law and they broke it themselves. So the Lord, again, in his amazing grace and generous mercy, does not do away with this nation. What does he do? He allows them another chance. Please help me preach to your neighbor. Tell them God gives another chance. Hallelujah. Tell you another one. God gives another chance. So, um, the story continues anyway, therefore. So, Moses has come down the mountain, which is where now we are reading. We are in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10. I'm going to go back to it in just uh, a bit. It says, at that time, the Lord said to me, Heal for yourself two tablets of stone like the first, and come up to me, and make for yourself an ark of wood. And God himself is the one saying to him, And I will write on the tablets, the words that are on the first tablets, which you broke. And Moses continues to say, That is exactly what I did. So remember, he's preaching to them. He's speaking to them. He's preaching this sermon or series of sermons to them. He's telling them, This is what happened, just in case you may have forgotten. And he says, I actually went up the mountain and I did exactly what God has said that I should do. And God himself in his own, uh, in his own hand did the work himself. Again, the grace and the mercy of God. You see, if it were human beings, we would have said, wow, let them sit down and remember what they said. Eh? Eh? I like an example many times that um, we talk about with Pastor Beatrice. And she says, Sazi ngini unajua unaambia mtoto, hii nyumba kuingia ni saa ngapi? Saa tatu. Hata saa tatu ni mwenye amepewa masaa nyingi. If you are a parent of sons, unajua waneza wakakaa dile masaa enye, wanajisikia di mtu wachoke na inje, ndi watakuja. Just to keep order and law in your house, umesema wangie masaka tha. Sasa sisi tunaingile masaye nye, mambo ni nyingi huku inje ya kufanya. Unajua, kwa nyumba hakuna kitu, so mambo ni nyingi, na nikikuja siya ti unani-engage, unataka tu ukiangale hivyo nione. Sindio? Sivyo ndio kunendanga? So, Pastor Beatrice tells me that there's this one time, allow me to use her examples, kwa nimeomba rusa. Kini sasa mtu wakio rafiki yako, si unatumia example like it. So, this time, um, kijana wake akuja kwa nyumba na alikuwa amechelewa wakafunga mlango <laughs> wamefunga mlango na mali yao iko nje kwa kweli sasa wanasema sasa mwenye nyumba ako ndani pastor john ako kwa nyumba pastor beatrice ako kwa nyumba watoto wengine wako kwa nyumba huyu wako nje ni nani wanasema watu wenye wako nje ni wa wakora watu wenye wanafanya mambo mabaya ndio wako huko nje so he said the son came home he's coming to knock I'm wondering, where is he? Who is that? It sounds like there's a knock, but I know there is no knock on that door. Because th who can be bold enough? So I funga mlango. Kijana si unajitafti ya makao hapo kwa veranda. Unajitengenezea. Unafanya interior deco ama ni exterior deco yo. Unatengeneza tu kwa inje. So Pastor Bill tells me, yeah, hakulala. Pastor John alilala. Kini yeah, hakulala. Anakai vya nashindua. 
mtoto wako hapa nje karibu nataka uchungulie hivi uone tu but you're trying to teach them a lesson ama namna gani aacheni kuangalia hivyo sipia nyinyi mnafanya hivyo na watoto wenu eh, you, you want the child to learn their lesson but let me let me let me just ask this question to you again that are parents for young people just just indulge me for a minute do your children learn do they learn the lesson unaweza ukasema tu kweli wewe vinyo ulifungiwa kwenyu sasa wewe jirudisha huko nyuma did you learn the lesson unakuja umechafua nguo umechafua umepigwa ume uko ume lakini hiyo siku umefura hivi mzazi anakuona anakuhurumia hai anashindwa akupige ama akutibu kwanza lakini that is the day you've had the best day umekuja una meno damu imejaa hivi lakini you've had such an adventure like wow <laughs> anyway god in his kindness and in his mercy does not treat the human being the way they are they they deserve to be treated what he does is that he says i'm actually going to write the law afresh myself for you people and so moses is giving the account again it says he did exactly that then he turned verse 5 and came down the mountain and put the tablets in the ark which i had made and there they are he's saying right now you guys know that's where the commandments are now israel the bible says um where is that i'm looking at verse 8 at that time now because these people have already fallen and the lord is reinstituting them back he's in the journey of reconciliation they are a fallen people who have broken the commandments they have gone against the ways of the lord but the lord is saying to them i am going to write them afresh i'm giving you a fresh beginning i'm giving you a restart i am bringing you back on board now together with that i have given you my commandments because there is no restart without the law of the Lord. You cannot just restart and then continue the same thing. In school, they used to tell us, the mathematics teachers and the chemistry teachers most of the times, that a fool is the person who does the exact same thing, the exact same way, every single time, and expects different results. That is what the definition of a fool is. A wise man does not last from, learn from their own mistakes. They wait to learn. They learn from other people's mistakes. Wanaona yule alipita hapo, akakosea, sasa mimi nisipiti hapo. I don't have to learn from experience. So it, is, it would be foolish for us, beloved, to every single time we have messed up, we have gone against the law of the Lord, to restart or to start afresh and doing the exact same thing. Now, for the restart, the model that we're given here by God for his people is that he knows there can be no restart without the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord must be central in the hearts of men and women. If there's going to be a real change in our hearts, if the restart is going to, to last, if something new is going to happen in our lives, the law of the Lord must be at the very center of our lives. And that is the word of the Lord. We must take the word of God and put it close to where we are. It must be what we look forward to. We can no longer live lives of saying, at me I live like this, this is how I feel like, this is how I am, this is how my, even do na kuanga, mimi si kuangi, misi sameangi watu araka. No, the Lord is calling us to put his word. And what does it, his word says? It says that you ought to forgive one another. He says in Colossians that you ought to make room for one another's faults. That the Lord has shown us that we ought to forgive other people as he himself has forgiven us so generously without counting. Bwana so there's no longer a place for us to take and create our own law for ourselves. We can't create an image of what we think the law should look like, the law of the Lord. We think the Lord is too serious in this thing. Ah, yeah, now, no, no, you sit down with the Lord. Let actually the law be your teacher. The law of the Lord. Sit with the word of the Lord. What is the Lord saying in his word? If you're looking for a restart in any area of your life, if it is family, if it is your own education, if it is whatever it is, your work, whatever, your salvation, your ministry, if you're looking for a fresh start, there is no fresh start without the law of the Lord being central in our lives. The next thing the Bible says in verse 8, at that time the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, to stand before the Lord, to minister to him, and to bless his name to this day. Now the Lord institutes the Levites. He institutes an enduring priesthood. It is after the fall of these people that the Lord now institutes the priesthood. He sets apart Levi or the tribe, the Levites, for himself. 
Now, in other words, God is saying, I have given you the law. Together with the law, I am also giving you a way for you people to come to me. Because if you want a fresh beginning, it is not sustainable without coming to me. At that time, the only people that could come close to God were the priests. So he institutes this. If you want to come to me, this is the way to do it. You will come through the priests. There needs to be a mediary, an intermediary, and that would be the tribe of Israel. So if you have fallen, what do, would you need to do? You need to come and take a ram and without blemish and it would be brought to the priest and the priest would just take upon all the sins of you and your family and place it on them about once a year, place it on that and then release it to go and wander off into the wilderness. And that would be symbolic of that the sins have been taken away. You'll go into a scapegoat. Muna iwachile inaenda wandering into the wilderness. Ienda yuliwe uko ama ikufe ama whatever it will do. Ienda tuna huko. Now, all your sins have been, um, have been laid upon it and it has gone away. So the Lord institutes a way of people relating with him, of people coming close to him, of people who are heavy laden with guilt and sin, having broken the law, they have now a way to come to God and there is pardon. Buona sefiwe. Now, if we look at where we are today, the word of the Lord that has come to us after you have fallen, we know that by way of Jesus Christ, he became our high priest. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 that we do not have a high priest who is untouched by the feeling of our infirmity, but one who was tested in every way, yet without sin. So he makes the invitation to you and I in verse 16. He says, therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the times that we need it the most. So even today, God has instituted, he has allowed that this priestly office would stand. And now we have the high priest, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That even today, the order still stands. That you cannot maintain or live in this restart without a way of coming right to God. And God has created the way. And the way has a name. And his name is Jesus. He says boldly, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father but by me. Hallelujah. So exactly the model he created then to a fallen people to come back, he continues to urge us on to do exactly that today. Let me say it one second time, a second time, that we would be fools again, beloved, if we thought that there is a restart for us in our lives, whatever area, without Jesus Christ, the high priest. He is the way to God the Father. You cannot ignore Jesus Christ. You cannot go through the Father using other means. There are not many other ways. People say that Jesus is one of the ways to God. No, no, no. Jesus says he is the only way, the truth and the life. There is no other way to God but by him. There is no other way to a fresh new beginning. The Bible will remind us that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Hallelujah. We have been brought into a place of newness. That is the original restart. We have been brought from the place of our fallenness and we have been given a place to sit. Actually, the Bible says it in the words of Paul to the Ephesian church. He says to them that God has seated you in heavenly places together with Christ. What a beautiful place for us to be. But beloved, there is no new place seated with God apart from the way of Jesus Christ, our high priest. That again is God's own amazing grace and his mercy. When he instituted the, priest, uh, the priesthood, when he starts it himself and carves out a whole tribe, in fact so serious that he doesn't even give them an inheritance. It says in verse 9, Therefore Levi has no portion of inheritance with his brethren. The Lord is his inheritance, just as the Lord your God had promised him. And God has made it so serious that does not even allow this person to have an inheritance or a portion among his brethren. He says, I am your inheritance. Wewe ka kwangu. I want you guys and the entire lineage, the Levites, to stick with me. I have a good plan. Because through you, I'm going to be meeting my people. And so that comes all the way up to Jesus Christ, just as we've said. That through him, we are able to go right to God. Not through men, ladies and gentlemen. Not through your pastor, ladies and gentlemen. Not through books and systems and structures of the world. Not through 10 steps or 3 principles or 91, whatever you want to call them. Keys. No. He says through Jesus Christ. The way, the truth, and the life. None of us can go to the Father but by him. Hallelujah. 
He says again, um, as the Bible continues in verse 10, As at the first time I stayed in the mountain 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord also had me at that time, and the Lord chose not to destroy you. Buona esto sifiwe. Interesting words by Moses again. He says, as at the first time, he's, he's re referring, let's have it back up there again, he's referring to that time when they broke the commandments for the very first time. And he says, as at the first time, I stayed in the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. The Lord also had me at that time, and the Lord chose not to destroy you. We are looking again at a glorious display of the mercies of God, of his amazing grace. But God looks around, and when Moses goes to intercede for the people, that the Lord actually remembers mercy upon them. This is his people, his tribe. He has created them for himself, but they go against his ways. But instead of clearing them all out, he says, I have a good plan. I'm still going to forgive these people. I'm going to institute something. Now I have instituted the law, the word. I've instituted it um, in their midst. I've also instituted the priesthood. Now, among them, they have a way to come to me. If they abide by the law and the priesthood, they have constantly a way to come back to me. That now what we had to wait for a long time to get into our fresh beginning, now every single time we can come into it. In fact, the deal gets even sweater, sweeter for you and I as believers because now the temple curtain is torn into two. When Jesus Christ is hanging at that cross, just before he gives, back, he gives up his spirit, the temple curtain is ripped from from top to bottom. And that simply, among other things, signifies to you and I that now we have access. What that curtain used to do was to separate the outer courts and the inner place, the holy of holies, where they believed that the, um, the ark used to dwell with the commandments. That's where it used to stay, Ukondani. So now there is a place. Ukondani ni priests too, alikuwa naeza kuingia. Bwanaesu wa sifiwe. Remember the priesthood, the mediators that we talked about. They were the only people who could go inside there. And even for them, it was so serious. Hakuwa tu unaingia hivyo na mchezo. Uluku unafungu wa kakamba hapa. Junaeza ingia huko na mambo yako uanguke ya pia huko ukufe. Na hakuna mtu unaeza ingia kutoka. So wakisikia umekaa kidogo, wana kutingizia kakamba. Kama uko hai na una tingiza, mgu. Wakitingiza sana na wea utingizi mgu. Wanajua, oi, hameitika. Hameitika uyu hameitua. So wanaanza kufuruta inje. It was a serious thing, beloved, where the law of the Lord used to dwell. And so we must consider how serious it is a thing for God to consider that seriousness and consider I will reap this place that used to separate them and me. And now, because of Jesus Christ, I am now giving them access. Now, if they pray through that intermediary, Jesus Christ, that great high priest, that one, they can have access to me. That now every time, if you're seated in this place and you're looking for a beginning, every time, whenever you're at home by yourself, without congregants and without the pastor, if you're at your office and you're feeling tired and you need a fresh beginning in Jesus Christ, so long as you remember that there is a way and his name is Jesus, right there, you can have a restart. Hallelujah. What a hope we have. What amazing grace that God would take that very serious thing and place it on Jesus Christ and says, just like he said for Moses in the wilderness, anybody who looks up at that serpent, they will not die after being bitten. He will say to us, the very same way, the Son of Man is lifted up on that cross. If anyone looks at him, they will live and not die. He says, if anyone believes in him, they will not perish, but have everlasting life. Finally, it says in verse 12, and now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. He's asking a question to them. He says to them, having reminded you all these things, he's speaking to Israel and says, and now, what does the Lord God require of you? I have given you a fresh start. He has given you, rather, he has given you a fresh start. He's given you his commandments again by his mercy. He has given you a fresh beginning by his mercy. He's instituted a way for you guys to come and talk to him, the priesthood, by his mercy. Now he's inviting you and saying, now having all these things, what is he asking from you? Is it not that you would fear the Lord your God? To fear the Lord your God, not in the sense of not in the sense of the fallen Adam, 
that they had God in the cool of the day and they hid. When God is asking you, where are you? And I say, I heard that you are coming. And we hid because we were naked. No. The fear of the Lord in that we are reverent. We revere the Lord so much. That we fall before him. We do what he says that we do. Because we've been called into a new life. Hallelujah. He says, what, does the Lord, what is the Lord asking of you? It's important for you to ask yourself that question. Maybe help me ask your neighbor. Neighbor, what is the Lord asking of you? The Lord is asking of us the exact same thing he's asking of his people. He's asking of Israel. You see, Israel was the nation that God created for himself. Now, you and I, the believers of today, are the people that God has created for himself. We have become his sons and his daughters, his own royal nation. The Bible will refer to us as a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, God's own people. He has called us that we may display the works of him who has called us out of the darkness into his marvelous light, First Peter chapter 2 and 9. He has called us his own nation. He has brought us into the kingdom of life and light with him. Pastor Joy reminded us today that we have been made priests and kings unto our God. That now we are able to come before his royal presence as a result or as a function of his amazing grace and mercy. What a gift we have and what foolishness it would be on our part if we did not take full advantage of the fact that God has called us to himself. And ask ourselves that beautiful question, beloved. What does the Lord require of you? Oh, people of God, what does the Lord require of you? If we woke up every morning and said to ourselves, now Mwashigadi, what does the Lord require of you? You ask yourself, what does the Lord require of me? Knowing all those things that we've just thought about, knowing that he's given us a chance after another, after another, after another, that he's given us his word to dwell among us, and he's given us his Holy Spirit, he's given us Jesus Christ, the great high priest, that we might be able to access him at all times, thinking about about this kind of amazing grace, what does the Lord require from me? But that I would fear and love the Lord my God. He says, but to fear the Lord your God. Hallelujah. The second thing he says is that you would walk in all his ways and to love him. The next thing that the Lord requires of you, he required of Israel and requires of you and I today, that we would walk in all his ways and love him. That we would walk in all his ways and love him. You see, I know many times we say, oh, I fell in love. I fell in love. We treat, love falling in lo we treat this thing for love as if it is just a happenstance thing. You know, if you want to go to the house, you can go to the house. If you want to go to the house, you can go to the house. If you are seated next to your spouse, please look at them. You may have fallen. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. You see, you may have fallen in love with them, but because I know we don't have honeymooners in the house, at least not from around here, you fell in love, but you decided to stay in love when the couples are doing their events. Say, sweetie, 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 hi, Kuara. The couples that you are inviting you, what, what, what? Anyway. When the couples are doing their thing and they're saying those things, many times they tell us marriage is work, but it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pastor Sangura is reminding me marriage is hard work, <laughs> but it works. Kweli si kweli. Sindio mana mpo pamoja jamani. Kwa sababu kuna mambo mazuri ambaya kuku kwandoa. Let me give you a tip for you that are married. This is, maybe they'll cut this part out. Let me. I'll give you a tip for you that are married. When you're talking about marriage around young people, please make sure that after you've said all those things about how hard marriage is, just remember also the sweet things about marriage and mention them. Sin mwa sa idea? Eh, ndio mpia mtu sa idea. Sao tuwapo muna sema tu, hey marriage, jete nkwambia ukingia kwa ndoa. Ndoa ma sacrifices and you have to make. Wate nkwambia kwa ndoa, mana pesa, ukingia kwa ndoa. Kwa like, okay, we are eagerly waiting for the good things. Alafu unaatia po umeenda nyumbani. Sasa unaenda hapi umetuachapa na madeni, na mavitungumu, na madifficulties. Tuambie pia hapo ndani kwa kweli sukali, utamu wa kuangaliana kupendwa alaha. Ama na mwaka. Anyway, back to what we were talking about. You may fall in love, but you must make the decision to stay in love. 
Now, I don't know how you came into salvation, no? I don't know how you... Maybe you just, you just heard the gospel being presented the first time. And you are just like, ah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. John chapter 3, verse 16. So, you heard that and your heart was moved towards God. Or somebody was preaching about the glorious good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you are moved to love the Lord. After that warm, fuzzy feeling, you know you still have to go home and put work to it. It is work to stay saved. I remember some time back when Vine Song, the musicians from the UK, came to Kenya. And when they were there speaking, Walikuja, walikuwa naongea, mambo, mambo, hapa na pale. And then um, they were giving a testimony. I don't know how I found myself there. I think um, the late Reverend uh, Geoffrey Muithi had invited me to come and uh, be where they were. Because I had, just, I, was, I had just joined the worship team, I think, around that time. So he had invited me to just come and be where they were. Um, you know, giving opportunities, bless his heart. And um, I remember he came, as they were speaking, they were giving a testimony. One of the, of the men that was saying, uh, it must be a miracle to be a Christian on the Kenyan roads. They're saying, Ati Unatoka Zimmerman, you drive to town and then you come and you're still a believer. You're still a pastor. You are a real man of God, they're saying to the reverend. Saying, Yani, Nanini Simnajuevo. On these Kenyan roads, Kwanza Kuna Barabara Pai Network Amiti Road, Kwakwele. Barabara, you can look at it one minute from Shiloh, it is clear. Then you just go like this to join it. What has happened? And the people have no courtesy at all. I remember when we went to the States in 2019 and we got to a junction. There were no traffic lights, there was no police officer, but the traffic was moving. So we got to a place at E. Nenda, Mnangoja Kidogo, E. Nenda, E. Nenda, Lassasanim Nangia. So I kept asking. So Munasonga na Garimoja apa Garimoja pale Garimoja kule. Ivo, Ivo, Ivo. So I was asking the person that was driving us. Nini na wongoza? I am you know, just mindfulness. You know, you're mindful of the other person. So I got here first. So lend your menda kwanza. Alaf sasa unachia ule aende. Alaf sasa mimi ni taenda. Alaf nasa ma, ah, inchi ku kwa kweli. Manake kule nito kako. Ati Kenya unasema, ati wacha ni muache tu kwa sababu. Nina kuwa shavi matana kupigia hivi honi naenda kutokea hivi. Nikitokea ni naona, ah, ni Pastor Richard. Wana sewe Pastor Richard. Amen. I'm trying to explain that you might have fallen in love, but you must put in the work to stay in love. The Lord is saying, I am requiring it of you, Israel, of you, my new nation, my people that I have called by my name. I am requiring it of you to walk in all my ways and to love me. Now, how do you walk in the way? How do you show that you love the Lord? That's why it's put together, to walk in his ways and to love him. He says that, how shall they know that, uh, uh, how shall you be known? How shall it be known that you love me? But by following my commands. I shall know that you love me if you keep my commands. So keeping the commands of the Lord is walking in his ways, beloved. Bwana Yesu Asifiwe. That whether I am driving, or I am sitting, or I am walking, or I am going around, that I am placing all of that before God as an offering. During the Harvest Conference, we talked about stewardship in one of the sessions. And we said, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 from verse 1, it says, therefore, here is what I want you to do, God helping you in the message paraphrase. Take your everyday, ordinary life and place it before God as an offering. You're eating, you're sleeping, you're walking around life. Place that before God as an offering. You walk in all his ways. You follow his commands. That if I am in my office, I am not in my office as just a Kenyan. I am in my office as a citizen of this nation that God has called us into. First. I am a believer. First. If I am at home with my children, I am a believer. First. I am a believing mother. A believing father. Bwana Yesu Asifiwe. I am not their mother, and then when I come to church, I am now their believer mother. No, it is everywhere. He says, what does he require of you? To walk in all his ways and to love him. So that our children, in youth Sunday, I must give you, 
ndio watoto wetu wasituone tuko huko kanisani tuna serve wanakuona unatembea wanaona unasalimia watoto wengine wala like, hello dear oh wow unawapatia hagi pande zote mbili oh you are so pretty your son is standing right next there wondering they have never had you compliment their clothes one day like this siku moja atadanganya mtoto mwambie kiatu chako kizuri si kila wakati ni msaizo ni viatu zinavaa zinaenda wapi mnaangalia ma tv huko alafu mnaenda kununua ma viatu kama hizo anashindwa huyu ni mama ya nani kwa sababu kanisani wanakuona na watoto wengine wenye hata viatu zao si mzuri kama zake jamani. Kuna kitu kwa youth service inaitwa luku. Ambia jirani yako luku. Luku yani ni vinye mlikuwa mnasema siku zenu mtu umevaa Sunday best, sawa? Ume dressed, dressed up, you dressed up, you looking good. Unajua umeka nguo, uko smart. Hiyo ndio luku. Sasa unajua luku ya siku zenu na ya siku zao ni tofauti. Sasa uachane na luku ya siku zao. Sasa zingine wacha niseme, wacha niseme yeah, I know they will come at me. They will come for me at this one. But sometimes we look at the photos of our parents. Back in the day bonus fee ya kina mama zetu. Na kuna nguo zingine zilikuwa zinafika huku jamani. Nguo fupi kwa kweli. Najua ndio ilikuwa fashion in the 70s and the 80s. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But look how well you turned out. I mean look at God. So the next time your daughter amechomoka kwa nyumba amevaa kitu inakaa tutu skirt. Nikaa naenda ku dance ballet. Na unajua kwa kweli hata hajuani na ballet. Usi mkashifu naambia wewe rudi uko kwa nyumba wewe unakaa kama mtu wa kusimama kule kwa barabara. Ah ah. You are a believer mother. So unamwambia you correct them in love. Pastor Alice tells us there is always a better way to say something. Always. It doesn't matter what you're saying. There's always a better way to say something. Because there is always a better way to represent Jesus Christ. He has a he has a requirement, a responsibility over your life, beloved. He says, "What does the Lord require of you but to fear the Lord your God and to walk in all your in his ways and to love him." When you are at home or in your office, we give that example. Nikuja kwa plot yenu na sijui sina simu yako ama sina nini. Niseme ninatafuta mama, nimeona akiingia hapa nilikuwa namkimbiza nimsalimieni wa kanisa yetu. Anaishi kwa plot. Nimeona ameingia hapa. Sema eh wa kanisa yenu. Anasema eh mama ameokoka sana hata anakuanga pasta wa sel wewe mahali. Ma eh mweupe hivi, mweupe ako na nywele fupi, mama wewe ameingia. Sema hiyo ma description ninapeana lakini sasa mali unanipoteza ni mali unasema ati ameokoka kwa sababu kuna mama kama huyo huko lakini kwa sababu wewe nguo zikiwa zimeanikwa kwa laini mtu akosea hivi aweke kwa laini zako. Kuja unazivuruta hivi zote kutoka huko juu. Unaziangusha chini fourth floor zimeanguka huko zinakanyagwa na watu. Nasema sitaki kusikia mtu hapa anaanika. Watu wanunue kamba zao. Alafu watu mtu anaingia tu kanisa hivi anakuona umeinua miko. <laughs> Let me give this final testimony. <laughs> Yesterday as we were leaving yesterday we had a, 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 a hangout a brunch for the workers who the people who served during the harvest conference and we had a good time we danced we danced with the bishop and pastor Alice we danced we had a good time in this place we ate and ate again we had a really good time we prayed we played games just after a whole week of being tired we just came to refresh ourselves and then we left i did a few errands with my sister then i went home as i was going home Um, I, I talked on my phone. Sawa, niko kwa gari. Yeah, I see you guys looking at me that badly. Let's go. Oko kwa na gari yake ndeshaga. Wacha tulias. So nimechukua simu. Ambaye nilikuwa naongea na yeye, hata hatukusikizana. So nikaweka simu chini. As soon as I was putting my phone down, I saw a cop. There is usually no cops in my route. <laughs> Nikaona polisi akanisimamisha hivi nikasema bwana yesu kwa kweli <laughs> akaniambia kagari kando so akakuja akaniuliza bari boss sema salama sana mkubwa <laughs> ma uh, unaongea na simu ukiendesha gari in that second i wanted to say niongea na simu mimi niongea na simu mimi nilikuwa na mimi hata even the thought came to me by the way while i was going to stop i can see i know my phone i can delete the call log hiyo hapo nimwambia wapi nani ila ninga na simu mtu wa mwisho niongea naye ni asubuhi 6:30 nikiwa G12 <laughs> But then in the split of a second I just thought it can be later come saa kwani tukikosea si naomba tu msamaha So uh, nikamwambia kweli mimi nimeongea na simu kabisa hata hii ilikuwa ya tatu nimeongea nayo huko nikaongea na nyingine na nikaongea na ninaomba tu nisamehe He started to smile Nikasema umeingia kwa roho ya polisi 
mwanaume jasiri ana smile sema bwana yesu oh hi i thank you for a restart lord jesus so the man came around kangalia insurance afa karudi tena kwangu asema ati unasema umeongea na tatu naambia tatu kabisa hii <laughs> ni vinyata atukusikizana otherwise ungenipata nikimuongelesha kabisa lakini ninaomba msamaha akasema unaenda wapi ambia naenda ruiru officer asema unafanya nini nasema nakaa huko asema unakujanga all the way kaambia inakujanga all the way na huku nikitoka ruiru asema okay asema eh lakini si huko ni mbali sana na ndio mnamaliza ibada usiku as like eh asema eh mimi nakujua najua unijui asema nilikuwa wednesday ulikuwa unatuongoza kwa the opening of the harvest conference <laughs> Let me tell you ladies and gentlemen <laughs> I have never been more glad <laughs> to follow the voice of the Lord <laughs> because I want to imagine kama ningeka hapo to Bishane and he's saying he's a new officer he has been working in Nyandarwa na uko then he's been transferred here but while he was na uko Nyandarwa sijui he used to go to the deliverance church there so when he came around here he looked for a deliverance church and this is where he came then he had akifanya mapatro yake akasikia kuna shailo akakuja akasikia kuna youth conference alikuwa off on wednesday akakuja akakaa huko nyuma mimi ndio nilikuwa naongoza worship on wednesday akaniona akaona huyu namjua huyu namjua so akinisimamisha haku anajua ni mimi of course but when he saw it was me akajua ah i don't know that he was testing me <laughs> but i want you to consider And let's just say if the Lord had not been on my side beloved <laughs> I don't know what I would have done maybe I would have done it different lakini jiulize labda utashika na polisi lakini your children are watching your spouse is watching your boss is watching they see you do your work alafu anakuona saa saba ikifika hata uwezi ukakaa kwa desk yako umeingia kwenda kufanya office fellowship anasikia wewe ndio unaombeshanga maombi huko alafu ukitoka wanaangalia mwenye anakuanga huko ndani kwa fellowship na wewe wanashindwa Then you ask yourself beloved what does the lord require of me is it not that i should fear the lord my god is it not that i should walk in all his ways and love him and serve the lord my god with all my heart and all my soul and to keep his commandments and his statutes which he has given me today the last word there says which i command you today for your good and to turn to your neighbor tell them neighbor all that the lord is requiring of you is for your good he says is it what do i require of you is it not that you should fear the lord that you should walk in his ways that you should love him that you should follow his commandments and his statutes for your own good it is for your good beloved as you follow the lord it is for your good as i follow the lord it is for my good as i follow the lord when people see my life and they desire to know jesus it is for my good and then it becomes for other people's good as well if we are looking to win people into the kingdom it is for your good and for their good as well that we follow the lord that we love him that we put in the work but we must remember the things that god gave israel for the restart that he has given to the believers and that he has given to you and i today we must take his word and let it be central in our lives we must receive the priesthood of jesus christ and go through him fellowship with him daily and we must embrace the work of the holy spirit in convicting us of our sin and giving it up to him every single time because it is for your good he is not a bad father a terrible man that is requiring of you hardship that he is not willing to help you and grace you through if he is requiring something from you he is gracing you for it as well I want you to take a minute and just lift up your voice. I want you to just lift up your voice and say Lord Jesus I realize today it is for my good that you're calling me to do these things it is for my good that you have given me a new beginning it is for my good it is for my good it is for my good come on lift up your voice shilo just a few moments lift up your voice and say god i realize it is for my good maybe you've been battling with the lord you're thinking these things are so difficult that i'm being required to do maybe you're thinking you have fallen too far it is not possible that you could have fallen farther than the falling that israel had done when they sinned against the lord when they broke his commandments but the lord who was kind and wonderful abounding in mercy he brought them in for himself he gave them a restart he gave them another chance 
If you're out there and you're lying or reeling in condemnation, the Lord is saying to you today, you can come again. I am abounding in mercy. I can give you a restart. I can get you fresh on your way again in the name of Jesus. Maybe you are struggling with the weight of sin right now. Consider that the Lord is saying, you can come, my child. You can come to me. I am abounding in mercy. If you only take the word to yourself and you accept the way of Jesus Christ, come again, come again, come again. In the first service, the speaker, Stephen, reminded us that our biggest mistake would be for the believers to think that it is only the sinners that need the mercy of God. Because the truth of it is, even us believers, we need the mercy of God daily. So maybe you're there, you're a believer, you've given your life to Jesus, you live and walk in him, but you know where you are right now. Auntie, to just reach out and say, God, I need your mercy. If you can just lift up your hand and say, God, I need your mercy. I am a believer. I am born again. I love you. I walk in your ways, but I still need your mercy. Come on, reach out, reach out, reach out for the mercy of God. Reach out for his mercy. Reach out for his mercy. Reach out, reach out for a fresh restart in his mercy. In the name of the Lord. Maybe you have fallen astray. Maybe you've gotten into things that you never thought you would. Maybe you're doing things that you know are not the things that God would have you do. Maybe in your parents maybe in your walking with the Lord, maybe in your work, maybe in your school, wherever it is, in your ministry, there are things or practices or just one thing that you do and you know the Lord does not approve of it. Today, you can have a fresh start in the name of Jesus. The mercy of God is available. Hallelujah. Or maybe you're there, you're not born again, you've never given your life to Jesus. You would want to be a recipient of his mercy today. If you lift up your hand, we will see it quickly. We will help you to make that decision as you restart your life afresh today in Jesus. If you're there, you want to give your life to Jesus. If you lift your hand, we'll see it quickly and we'll pray with you. Are you there? Are you there? The rest of us, we are praying for ourselves. We are asking that the Lord would remember mercy over us. If you want to give your life to Jesus, just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your amazing grace. Thank you for your love and for your mercy. Thank you because you have gone the great lengths of calling us your people and making us your own. Today we submit ourselves to you afresh. We surrender to your mercy. We give in to your grace, your amazing grace. We pray that, Lord, just like Israel of old, having given us a fresh start, that, Lord, you would help us to live in your word. Let it be central to us. Let us consult your word for everything in the name of Jesus. Not the philosophies of men, not the patterns of the world. Your word, Lord Jesus. If that worked for Israel, then we know it is what you've called, O oh God, to work for us again today. Help us also by way of Jesus Christ to come to you in the name of the Lord. Let every unbelieving heart be drawn to you today in the name of Jesus, in our families, in our homes, even right here in the name of the Lord. And Lord, where our hearts are believing, but once in a while we fall from your path, I pray that we will take the help of your Holy Spirit that convicts us and leads us to repentance in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to do the things you're requiring of us. Help us to fear you, Lord Jesus. Help us to walk in all your ways, to follow your commandments and to love you. Help us to keep your statutes and your laws, to keep your charge that we may have a fresh restart every single day. We honor you, we bless you, and we thank you because we pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.